to the Aftershock. Glad to have you here. I appreciate you taking the time to join us uh, for the, for not only the program, but for what's become the uh, the inaugural. Some people say the best the best part of the show is the Aftershock, and I'm like, wow, that's you know, okay, you know, maybe I don't know. I didn't feel like the show was too salesmany this week, and that's a weird thing. It's like right now we're we're like a week away from probably starting to really get heavy into the holiday special. Um, we're discussing do we pull the marketing back a little bit for the holiday special because there's only 75 of each of them we're, we know we're going to sell out um and the computers are amazing this year they're way better than last year so because i mean the parts that we had to order are literally hot off the presses brand new current gen parts i mean the only thing that could make these computers any better is if we had access to the new ryzen 5000 chips but they're not expecting those to even start shipping to uh, wholesalers until november late november um people are trying to pre-order them right now but good morning mitch thanks for joining us appreciate it so anyway uh you guys tell me what you want to talk about today um because this has been a crazy week you know on the personal side i've had a lot of emotionally draining stuff uh, then there was the presidential election, which was also very draining. Um, then, you know, we have people getting hacked on their iPhones in a Sophos migration, which is logistically complicated. Um, it's It's been a week. So uh, I don't want to presume that you guys, that I know what you want to hear about today. So uh, what I can tell you is that volume in the service centers, all of the service centers, has been down this week, which was really surprising. This is usually the time of year uh, computer sales were up. We were selling a lot more computers, which is normal this time of year. But uh, but repair volume was way down. Um, you know, it could have been the election. Everybody was a little preoccupied with that. Um, then, of course, you know, if your chosen football team of choice didn't perform well, you know, you might have been a little bummed about that. Uh, it is 2020. That's enough to bum a lot of people out just by itself. Um, so, you know, we saw that. So usually what ends up happening is we have a snapback on the, on the other side. Uh, it was actually a blessing in disguise this last week, though, because we handled a lot of phone calls this week from customers who needed to be migrated to uh, from Semantic to Sophos. We were, you know, migrating them over the Shrock desk and doing everything we can to get everybody taken care of as quickly as possible. Um, so it was nice to have a little slower bench this week. Uh, it allowed us to get caught up on building computers because uh, we the part shortages are still real, guys. So some weeks I can get cases, some weeks I can't get processors. Some weeks I can get motherboards and I can't get hard drives. Um, and so literally when we see something available, we just grab all of it and order it and bring it in. And it kind of leads to a backlog in construction because you're missing one part to finish five computers. Um, normally that wouldn't be the case. We'd order you know 10 of each and then we'd just build 10 computers and it's really easy. Um, so anyway, so we've been a little bit backed up on those there, but uh, we're getting caught up on that, so that was a blessing this week. Uh, we also were able to, like I said, uh, catch up and get a lot of people migrated on Sophos. So you know, all things for a reason, right? All things for a reason. All right. Having my coffee and enjoying the show. Good to have you, Roger. We'll drink with you here. All right. So, I, yeah. Everything that comes into my mind as being top of mind is something that I can think half my audience doesn't want to talk about. So that's why I was like, you tell me what you want to talk about, and then we can go from there. Um, I'm not going to get into conspiracy theories. I'm not going to argue about voting machines or Dominion voting systems or you know, mail-in versus same-day ballots or law challenges or who the president is. You know, it's like, you know, lovely Kimberly and I were talking about this, and it's like, well, number one, this is just a horrible situation all the way around because let's just say that somehow trump remains president literally you're going to have people burning stuff in the streets it's going to be stupid um and then let's just say that as it appears biden is going to be the next president of the united states that poor man however you feel about him is going to take office with half of the country believing he was illegitimately elected and on top of that, um, the left wing of his party is going to want him to do all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, they may or may not have control of the Senate, depending on some runoff races and things like that. Um, he's going to be under an immense amount of pressure. And of course, you know, the theme that he's putting forward right now is bringing everybody back together. Um, wow, it's tough, guys. You know, it's very, very tempting. And I'm, I'm, let me let me frame it this way. If you're a Trump supporter and you're swallowing that bitter pill that is probably going to be a defeat, but if you're swallowing that right now, 
and you're dealing with those emotions and a Biden supporter comes along and says rah rah re let's all get along kumbaya there is an overwhelming desire to punch that person in the face um, obviously too soon you know it's too soon to get on Facebook and say you know let's all just get along together now that this is over um, because everyone's emotions are still very raw number two from Trump supporters anyway the tendency is where was that three years ago or where was that four years ago from you and so now it's one of those games where you know we're gonna treat your guy exactly how you treated our guy and then when, when the roles reverse they're gonna treat our guy their guy you know everyone's gonna be treated like garbage forever is basically what it amounts to unless one side decides to be the bigger person and treat the president of the United States with respect the problem is the other side won't do it and that's what both sides believe if they're the ones that take the first step the other side won't do it so I don't know what the solution here is guys I honestly don't know um, honestly uh, divided government is the preferred outcome uh, by the markets anyway um, they think with divided government everyone's gonna have to work and get along together and you're not gonna have this crazy stuff you're not gonna get the Supreme Court packed with 19 justices like FDR wanted to do um, you're you're not gonna see the Green New Deal you know eliminate fracking and fossil fuels forever um, you're not gonna see you know large tax cuts for businesses you're not going you you might you're gonna see another round of stimulus relief probably but it's gonna be much more targeted there's not gonna be the big giveaways to blue states there's also not going to be uh, another round of PPP probably for companies so you know it, it's gonna be a more moderated approach a more milk toast approach and part of me is like you know milk toast is kind of would be good right now you know I, I'm feeling like I can't handle it I can't handle the hard steak right now I'm just <laughs> I <laughs> Ooh, I'm, I'm ready to, uh, you know, yesterday, guys, I sat outside for an hour and watched my kids play. It was the best part of my day yesterday. It was awesome. Um, and I'm like, why don't I do this more often? You know, this is, why don't, I, why don't I ever find time to do this more often? So anyway, I guess the mantra that I will give you that I am living by right now is we control what we can control. And we change what we can change and we fight for what we believe is right whether whatever you believe is right you should fight for that um, you're not gonna change any minds retreating into a social media echo chamber whether that is you know dumping all the Biden people off your your Facebook page or dumping all the Trump people off your Facebook page you know I opened up a parlor account this week um, yeah it's not exactly Twitter it looks like Twitter it acts like Twitter but literally there there are very 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 few people of dissenting opinion on it um, yeah I mean it's one of those things where it's like this could be an echo chamber really bad I saw some some conspiracy theories that I know are not true from people that I was starting starting to believe that maybe they weren't just kooky people but they actually might actually have some integrity to them and then you, you, you know the Sharpie gate thing in Arizona um, they're gonna look into it you know they're, they're gonna figure out one once and for all can you use the sharpies that they gave you at the polling place to fill out your ballot that the Dominion voting system said would work with the systems I saw a conspiracy theory that says Donald Trump in a masterful chess move distributed ballots to all 50 states that have watermarks therefore if a if an evildoer steamed your ballot envelope open take took your ballot out and replaced it with a fake ballot it won't have a watermark and now we're gonna catch them red-handed stealing an election the problem is the federal government does not supply ballots to municipalities states or counties they do not supply the paper that those ballots are printed on to anyone either there is no watermark there is no it, it's completely it's going viral right now and it's completely fake um, and it, any any media outlet that you see that shares that whether you know this is something to be aware of guys there are fake news sources on both sides right um, if you want to have trusted news you have to make sure that you take the time to look into something so I heard this thing like you know what's the deal with this ballot thing is this true um, and sure enough you know if you think about it logically you're like I don't think the federal government prints ballots but hmm you look into it and you find that you know no they don't actually that it's each state and municipality's job to do it and therefore there you go 
um, you know, isn't it awfully strange that people, you know, that Republicans uh, want to, you know, gain seats in the House, potentially held on to the Senate, uh, literally held or took almost every single state house on the ballot this time, yet the President of the United States lost. You know, I'm looking at the race in, in Omaha, 2nd District, Don Bacon uh, versus Kara Eastman, and Don Bacon won that race by a large margin, but the President lost an electoral vote in that district because they didn't vote for him. It is possible that people like their local politicians more than the national politician. That is possible. Um, you know, I, I'm not saying that I know that I have any super secret intelligence or anything. Uh, I am not special. I, <laughs> I'm just a guy with some common sense, and I'm saying I could. You know, I, I'm sure there are some people that just didn't vote for president at all. They're like none of these guys. There are some people who voted for Kanye. You know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you never know, right? Um, some people voted for Mickey Mouse, I'm sure. Uh, some, a lot of people voted for the uh, the Libertarian candidate. A um, lot of vitriol there going on for that guy right now. And it's just, you know, it, it's time to get back to basics and back to principles here and uh, and figure out what you stand for. Because if you know what you stand for, if you know what your worldview is, it doesn't matter who the president is. It doesn't matter none of it matters what matters is you know who you are and what you stand for and what your family stands for and if you know that then you're going to vote accordingly and if the world disagrees with you that doesn't change what you stand for now of course if you stand for like mayhem and death and slavery and everything else well you know hopefully we can guide you gently toward the light <laughs> um but you're still going to stand for what you stand for. You're going to believe what you believe. But what's in your heart is what's in your heart. Um, that's why I don't think, you know, if it's looking like Biden's going to be the next president, guys, depending on, you know, I know that there is uh, a razor thin possibility that something else will happen. 99% um, likelihood that Biden's the next president. So are Republicans going to go out in the streets and burn stuff? Are Trump supporters going to take skateboards, baseball bats, and guns and kill Biden supporters? Are Trump supporters going to m compile lists of people who donated to the Biden campaign so that they can go pay a visit to their house to express their displeasure? These are all things that happen to Trump supporters. You know, it's... No, they're not going to do that. It's just that's not... I hope. I would hope not. I would hope not. I'm not going to do that. I know one that I know is going to do that on either side. Uh, I don't tend to hang out with people that like to burn other businesses down and <laughs> hit people in the head with skateboards. Not my crowd exactly, but you know it exists. Uh, you know one of the biggest things is pay attention to your local races and your local politicians. Those are the people that you can hold to account. You can't hold Joe Biden or Donald Trump to account for anything, but you can hold your local election commissioner to account. You can hold your local. Uh, state representative to account. You can hold your city councilman to account. Everybody pays attention to the big federal races. Very rarely do they pay attention to the smaller races. Um, which leads me to the final point before I stop talking about politics altogether. I have 66 people watching right now, 68. Um, but I know that there's a lot of people who don't want to hear anything about politics right now. There's another election coming in two years. The big reason... Okay. Those of you who are Trump supporters, who are whose crying towels are being wrung out into buckets right now, think about all the things that Donald Trump was able to do that will outlast his presidency. We're talking Supreme Court justices, Circuit Court justices. For heaven's sake, he flipped the Ninth Circuit. The Ninth Circuit is no longer a liberal circuit. Trump did that. Those are things that are going to... Jerusalem is the capital of Israel, where our embassy is. Joe, Joe Biden is not going to move the embassy back you know, to somewhere else. He's going to keep the... The Middle East is on a pathway to actual, real peace. Joe Biden's not going to stop that from happening, right? So there, there's some things that we can take away from this. The things that were good that were going on, those things aren't going to go away immediately. There's going to be some regulation. There's going to be executive orders and all that stuff, part of the whole imperial presidency thing, right? That's all going to happen. But the big thing is, is that if you're a Trump supporter... The Republicans took control or maintained control of just about every state legislature in the country. 
those state legislators are responsible for redistricting congressional districts based on the census. Um, the other day, my Amazon Alexa is throwing me like, election word of the day today, gerrymandering. If you don't know what gerrymandering is, it's where a politician sits down and draws a crazy crooked line around a population of people to ensure that someone from their party has the maximum chance of getting elected. If we group as many of the other side into one group as possible and call that one district, it will be forever for our opponent, but it pulls all their voters so all the districts around them will be for us, so we win. That's what's going to happen right now in the legislatures after the census is over. New York, all the blue states, the big blue states, have seen a population exodus due to the pandemic. New York, California, uh, gosh, Oregon, uh, all, of, all of the coastal states have seen population move because of the lockdowns, because of the policies. There's just been, it's been happening for a decade, but it went into overdrive this year. They're going to lose seats in Congress. Those seats are going to shift to other states like Florida and Texas. So the redistricting or the gerrymandering is going to be critical moving forward for elections in the future. Two more years from now, we're going to have another election that's going to determine control of the House and the Senate. All of this depends not only on what Donald Trump does, but on what Trump supporters do. Are Trump supporters supporters of Trump, or are Trump supporters supporters of an idea that can outlast Trump? That's the question that no one has the answer to yet. So know what you believe in, and believe in it, because there will come a time again to vote on what you believe in again. And maybe next time the results will be different. Maybe they'll be. Maybe the results came out exactly how you wanted them this time. You know, I don't think anyone is going to argue that Trump was a pleasant person to listen to. But he was effective at doing the things that people that were his supporters thought were important. And Joe Biden will probably try to do things that he thinks his supporters find important as well. That's the nature of politics. That's the nature of the, the, the republic that we live in. Um, I don't know what the path back is for many media outlets um, that were so clearly biased in their coverage. Um, some some organizations, at least in the last week, tried to give the appearance that they were being um, fair and balanced, you know, if you, to use a Fox term. Um, not all of them succeeded. Um, some of them didn't try at all. Um, some of them want the president arrested today, and they've expressed that on the air. Um, you know, is Trump going to pardon himself was a news story. I'm like, come on. Pardon him for what crime he's been convicted for. You can't pardon someone for something they haven't been convicted. You can't pre-pardon somebody. You know, you, you got to convict them of something and then pardon them. So, all is not lost. The world will not end tomorrow. The sun will come up, and the Senate, if it's still controlled by Republicans, will create divided government. And in divided government, the things that get done are compromises. Compromises that not everyone is totally happy with. You know, I think if everybody was forced to get along a little bit and talk to each other, it wouldn't be a bad thing. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with the media landscape going forward because if you can't trust news sources, so for example, do a search on Google for your choice of election stories. Do the same search on duck.com for your choice of election stories and you will get completely different results. If you go on Facebook right now, which all of you are right now, you probably saw the little banner at the top that said Joe Biden is the president. Okay? You know, no one can really argue that the social media companies were non-biased. Um, there is actually an inquiry right now in Congress as to whether or not uh, Google, Google was manipulating the, uh, the notifications that they showed in their products to customers. Uh, the belief is so that only people on the left were reminded to vote and people on the right got no reminders. Again, you know, I don't know when this happened, but, you know, the Republican Party was always the party of personal responsibility, right? You need to know what day it is to vote. You need to make sure you go vote. Don't miss an election. Number one, if you ever want to run for anything in your life, your voting record is public. People can go back and look. If you don't vote and then you try to run for something, if you want to help your community and you try to run for something, your opponent's going to say, welcome to the party. Where have you been for the last 20 years? Go vote, right? Get informed. And the problem is there's not a central location anymore where you can get informed. You can't watch the NBC nightly news and expect to get a fair portrayal of what's happening in the country anymore. 
you can't go to MSNBC or CNN or some people even say Fox News anymore and get a fair portrayal of what is happening. So that pushes people to go to alternative media sources. The problem is there's no vetting for those sources. So someone like a Dan Bongino, who is amazing at what he does and the, and the quality of information that he provides, is put forward on the same par as an Alex Jones, who has moments of brilliance and then puts forward some in, insane um, ballots have a watermark conspiracy theory as news. And they don't. And you can you can figure that out with logic and common sense. Um, so it's tough. you got to find some trusted sources of information. So when it comes to technology, guys, I appreciate the fact that you find us to be a trusted source of information. Um, we have products and services that we promote. We have to pay the bills like everybody else. But when it comes right down to it, you know, if you're trying to make a choice between CenturyLink, Cox Communications, you know, Comcast, Windstream, or Starlink... We're going to give you the pluses and minuses of all of them. Uh, we always encourage you to go with a local company whenever possible. That's why uh, we always recommend in Nebraska Future Technologies. Uh, they're a microwave internet provider, great company. I know the owner. He's a good guy, great family man, um, provides internet to people in rural areas that can't get it any other way. It's brilliant. So there's a lot of things to be proud of. There's a lot of things to be excited about. There is a future to look forward to. It is not all tears and dismay. There's going to be legal battles, and that's a good thing. That's a good thing. You know, people, Trump supporters will point out, yeah, get people wearing Biden masks, counting the votes in the count rooms. They were putting cardboard up over the window so you couldn't watch what they were doing. Um, you know, none of those things actually prove that people were miscounting votes. So I'm not, I don't waste a ton of time worrying or thinking about that. What it says to me is whoever the election commissioner is in that state where those things are happening is an idiot because the one job that guy has is to make sure that election is airtight and looks airtight you can't have the appearance of it not being fair or nobody is going to believe the results so you can't put cardboard up over the windows you can't have people wearing political attire while they're counting votes you just can't have that. Even though if the people take the shirt off, their hearts are the same hearts, they're the same people. But you just it's having the appearance of it being biased like that just opens that door a crack. And once people believe that their vote actually doesn't matter anymore, that actually even if you vote, even if enough people vote, it still won't count, that's the death of a republic. And I think we can all agree that we don't want that to happen. So the question that I have is, what are you going to do? And so what I'm going to do is I am going to enjoy my children. I am going to work my butt off in my business. I am going to do my best to bring you guys products and services in the next year, four years, whatever, going forward that will blow your mind. We're pursuing deals right now that are unimaginable, um, that were unimaginable two years ago. We have plans for the radio show, plans for the podcast, more social media presence because, you know, we can't trust Facebook to constantly carry our show, especially if I do segments like this one. So I don't want to get slapped with disclaimers. I don't want to get, you know, censored. So the best way to prevent that from happening is to make sure that your, your show is carried on multiple venues. Unfortunately, most of those venues are owned and operated by other social media companies that would censor the same people for the same reasons. How do you get around that? Well, you know, there are other social media platforms that you can support out there. Like I said, I opened a Parler account. I don't even use Twitter. I don't use Twitter at all. But I opened a Twitter account or a Parler account um, and followed a few people on it, sent my wife a message because she opened one too. And I said, you know, hey, here we are, whatever. Am I going to jump on Parler and use that as a news source? No. Am I going to tweet or, or parlay, they call it. Am I going to parlay on Parler? Uh, daily? Probably not. Uh, am I going to open a parlor social media account for Schrock Innovations? Probably not. Um, because I've seen what happens. And the problem with parlor is that that's where everybody goes who gets banned from other sources. Some of those people get banned for good reasons. Many of them don't, but some of them do. And I don't want to be associated, I don't want my company associated with those people. 
Uh, I can personally repudiate somebody who makes a racist comment or something stupid like that uh, on my own personal parlor account. But when you're a company, it adds another layer to it. And it's also another social media source. You know how busy we are with just Facebook? Literally all day long, messages, questions, comments. I love it. It's great. It's an audience that we, we appreciate and we love, and we help so many people through it, and it's been good for our business. But if I get too many more social media accounts, guys, we're going to have to hire someone just to be the social media person to answer all the questions because it's getting out of hand, right? Um, so anyway, so I guess that's my, you know, I'm not going to give you a kumbaya speech that says everybody needs to just, you know, suck it up and get over it and come together. You know, we can all be one people kind of stuff. Um, it's too early for that. There's a lot of people out there that are still very upset. Um, there's a lot of people, There's we still don't know the actual outcome of the election. You know, we don't actually know what some of these states are voting yet. Some of the some of the elections are still close. Then you have the legal challenges to think about. So the media is saying that given the probabilities of all of these things, while it is statistically possible that Donald Trump could win the presidency, the probability of that happening is incredibly low. Do you trust the media? A lot of people say no. So you know what? What good does it do for you to hold that animosity in your body and in your mind for the next? 30 days. You know, I heard one person say, Trump should just accept the loss and move on just like Jimmy Carter did, just like George W, or just like uh, George Herbert Walker Bush did, and just like Al Gore did. And it was kind of funny, he threw the Al Gore one in at the end, and it's like, you know, Al Gore kept it in court for 30 days, I remember that. He kept it in court for 30 days. I got so much extra bonus presidential coverage because they didn't have any more commercials to run because it ran so long into the night. Um... So anyway, if it stays in court for 30 days, it stays in court for 30 days. Let's just make sure that at the end, all of the options have been explored. Because if you, if you chop this off and say, no, 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 that matters, you're going to take a, a fraction of people and you're going to radicalize them off to one side. And it's going to be hard to bring them back in again. So if you're Joe Biden and you actually want to bring the country together, let the legal challenges play out. You know, they're going to fight them, they're going to fight them, they're going to make sure that you know, no one steals the election from them, but let them play out. Um, yeah, the media declared him a victor, he declared himself a victor, they're starting the transition thing. You know, if he is the next president, I kind of want him to have a transition. You know, I would like to have him hit the ground running um, so that he knows what's going on, and that his staff knows what's going on, and that he and his staff can make appropriate decisions and get things done. Um, who knows what Joe Biden is going to do? You know, Joe Biden, you know, we just don't know what we're going to get because the media didn't really ask him any questions. So for all we know, I'm, I'm really hopeful, guys. You know, I was hopeful when Obama got elected, too, that maybe he wouldn't be as radical as everybody says he is. Maybe we were all wrong about that. Yeah, well, you know, he served his constituents well. He did. Um, Joe Biden will serve his constituents well. Um, that's the hope. Now the question is, who are his constituents? And uh, that's what's going to be the determining factor on how Joe Biden behaves, I think. So there's another. There's always another election, guys. There's always another chance. There's always another round. Um, don't let this weigh your soul down. Don't don't let it destroy your your week or your day. Um, you know, I saw my mother and father-in-law, and they, they literally looked like they'd been beaten. Um, they were Trump supporters. And, uh, and it's just, you know, guys, it, you know, I, I sure hope Nancy Pelosi doesn't stay on as speaker, you know, somebody told me. And, uh, you know, I'm like, you know what, guys, don't worry about that stuff. If she doesn't stay on as speaker, great. If she does stay on as speaker, guess who they're going to talk about in the election two years from now continuously? It... Everything happens for a reason, and everything works out in the end. So anyway, that's that's all I've got to say about that. <laughs> is there anything else that anybody would like to hear about today? Because nobody is telling me anything, um, so I just decided that maybe everybody wants that. So I went, okay, here we go. The comments were here the whole time. you got to be kidding me. Facebook said I had no comments, and I, I pushed scroll, and all of a sudden, like, a thousand comments appear. The whole time, you may have been telling me to shut up, and I didn't even know it. All right, good morning. Officially windy here in Grand Island. The links are breaking off the log chain weather vane. <laughs> good morning. Hello. Hey, Richard. Hey, Paul. K2 
KJ, good morning from Lincoln. I actually look forward to your show on Sunday morning. Well, thank you. I look. I actually look forward to you being here as well. Just a comment. When you talk about routers, you might want to make sure the customer is aware they can turn off different bands. Um, yeah, you can. You can turn off the 2.4 or the 5 gigahertz bands. That's a good point. I can point that out next time I talk to somebody. Yep, Schrockville time. Was just kidding about talking about the Huskers or Biden. You talk about whatever you want to. There's not much to say about the Huskers. I mean, the, the whole the whole football season this year is a goat rope, guys. I mean, the schedule is awful. They have no games to hone themselves before they jump right into, like, Big Ten ranked play. What did we think was going to happen? I mean, all you can hope for is that they develop, that the team develops. This is not going to be a championship year. It's not going to be. And even if it was, it would have a giant asterisk after it. Do you want to be the pandemic champion? I don't think so. I'm not able to hear the show or see the video. I can only see the comments. I'm not sure if you refresh yourself there, Loan. Not that you can hear me say that. If Biden is president, how long do you think it will take for China to invade Taiwan or Hong Kong? You know, Ronald, again, this is going to fall into the category of things that I can't control. And my opinion is worth about as much as a drop of water in a bucket. But if my opinion did matter, I would say it's actually less likely that China is going to make a move on Taiwan now. Because they believe China will... If you look at what's happened to China's markets since uh, Joe Biden was declared the victor, the yuan has, has gained strength immensely. Um, yeah, people feel that the uh, that Biden will get rid of the trade war, that the the uh, tariffs will go away, that um, that the arms sales to Taiwan will stop. So, China is not ready for a head-to-head -head conflict with the United States. They're just not ready. Um, they need more time. And so if Joe Biden gives them the option of having more time in exchange for an agreeable present environment, China will take that deal every day of the week. So I wouldn't expect China to do anything too aggressive with Taiwan. Um, just because Biden is president, um, they're going to feel him out first before they test him, I think. I know you are expecting my annual early November suggestion to have a location in Grand Island. <laughs> I will not do that this year since 2020 has been a crazy year. <laughs> That's awesome. Mark, I hear you, my man. I hear you. Oh, golly. By February? <laughs> Better or worse, whoever is inaugurated is my president. You know, Dean, that's awesome. You know, it's they're, they're my president, too. I mean, whether you want them to be or not, they're your president. Um, I just wish there were more people in the world that, that would be able to to do that you know uh, when I was the first political election that I was uh, you know aware for was I was an early teenager when Bill Clinton got elected first time and I, I thought Bill Clinton was the greatest thing I watched the Democratic National Convention I watched the whole thing I didn't understand anything about what was going on with you know Paula Jones or any of that stuff I was 12 right <laughs> I didn't know any of that stuff um, you know the market did great under Bill Clinton you know we had some minor military conflicts but nothing crazy happened uh, politically, you know, Republicans at the time thought he was the worst thing that has ever happened to the country. And then, you know, Obama came along. And Obama was the worst thing that had ever happened to the country. And now Biden comes along, and we're going to be told again that he's the worst thing that's ever happened to the country. Um, at some point, you have to ask yourself, which one of the, if you had to put him on a number line, which one actually is worse? Which one was the worst of the worst thing that's ever happened to the country, right? <coughs> Politics is a weird, weird thing. And nobody wins. Nobody comes out saying, you know, if you're looking for the all-encompassing, throttling victory, that very rarely happens. Most of the time, it's an incremental change. The problem is, many people see it incrementally only moving in one direction. And then once every 20 or 30 years, we have a president like a Reagan or a Trump that pops in and does something completely different and blows up that establishment march to one side and pushes it back a ways, but then the march eventually continues on, uh, like it can't be stopped. And some people say that march is progress and change. You know, I had one of my employees actually argue with me that uh, that the Constitution was a living document, because that's what they teach kids in school now. And I told him that the Constitution is not a living document. Um, what does that even mean, a living document? Well, you know, the people who wrote it were so old, it was so long ago, that the times have changed, and now it just doesn't apply anymore. 
Okay. What part of it doesn't apply anymore? And then, of course, when you start drilling down into specifics, they can't give you any specifics, so they're just repeating what they've been taught in school. And there was no depth to it. It was, you know, mile-wide, inch-deep stuff. Um, you know, freedom of religion. Guy's an atheist. I'm like, freedom, freedom of religion. It doesn't mean freedom from religion. It means freedom of religion. But it protects your right to serve in a government office if you have no religion. It, it prohibits you from having a religious litmus test applied to you in order to be in our country. Is that part old or outdated? Is the part about being able to have free political speech old or outdated? You know, some people would say yes to that, actually, given the way things are going in the local uh, social media landscape. Um, some people would say the right to bear arms is outdated. Like, we don't need to have all these guns anymore. Um, yet the funny thing is, is you thought gun sales were hot before Biden was elected. They're through the roof after he's elected. Why are they through the roof? I don't think Joe Biden is going to come steal my guns. I don't think he's. I don't think that's a top priority for Joe Biden, honestly. Um, Joe Biden says a lot of things to a lot of people because he's a politician. That's what they do. They look at the audience they're talking to and they say what that audience wants to hear, and they will say something completely different to the next audience if times change because they've evolved. You see. So, I don't see Joe Biden coming after our guns. You know, I don't see him trying to change the Constitution. Um, you know, what part of the Constitution no longer applies? Should women not be able to vote? Is that the part that doesn't apply anymore? Um, you know, what about racism or slavery? Maybe that's not. The, in the World Herald ran this article. Uh, for those of you who are in the Omaha metro area, there was an, an initiative on the ballot that said that uh, slavery and indentured servitude can no longer be used as forms of punishment. Um, and I'm like, I don't even know what this means. Like, does this mean like chain gangs? I mean, slavery where is slavery legal why do we have to have a ballot initiative to stop slavery this is weird and then the Omaha World Health ran a story the next day saying that 32 percent of the people said that slavery was okay I'm not that's not what the ballot initiative actually said it was talking about using prisoners for uh, for productivity reasons uh, when they're incarcerated so it was it was turn back it's not going to happen anymore that's fine but the way it was worded made it sound like you know it was slavery slavery like you know 1880s slavery slavery um yeah so anyway got a rebel call 10 days ago after i did sophos on my laptop and phone not complaining just informing you okay sounds good alan yeah we're uh the uh the robo call system is an evolution in progress and as we get the number of people reduced we're catching these little errors and eliminating them so i apologize if you continue to get those calls for some reason please let us know but you shouldn't get them anymore all righty talk about computer parts from china or more parts from the usa made um well you know i uh, had a meeting uh, about a website with a plastic manufacturing company here in omaha last week um they are looking for customers who plan to make a million or more things. They are looking for customers who are entrepreneurs who are looking to create a mold uh, or a product, basically. The cost to create an injection mold in the United States is between ten and $30,000. That's for the mold. That's the two pieces that you go clunk and then you shoot the plastic into it. That doesn't count the cost of the plastic or the cost of the injection molding itself. That's just the cost to make the mold. I can make the exact same mold in China for $1,400. How do you compete with that? How do you compete with that? So yeah, even if I have to pay the tariff on baking my product in China, I can make the mold in China and then having the mold back and then I could maybe do my injection molding here in America. We could make the parts in America, but the problem is once you have the mold made, if the mold is in China, the Chinese have the mold at that point, the factory will sell your mold to other people. There's no honor there. Um, so if you have something that's really uh, interesting, you're going to want to keep it local. Um, we've looked into, you know, can we 3D print our own cases? Can we, can we manufacture cases for our computers in America? Can we do it out of plastic with injection molding rather than metal and things like that? Um, and the answer is there is just no production capacity that is economically competitive in the world stage in America to make electronic components. It simply doesn't exist. So one of two things is going to have to happen for that to change. It can change, but one of two things is going to have to happen. Either one, 
there's going to have to be some horrible world event like a freaking world war that disrupts the supply chains in those countries so that people have to make their stuff here at whatever cost they have to pay, which will mean the cost of products to you will go up by double. Or number two, we're going to automate factories, robotic factories. If we can take the labor cost out of the procedure, we can cheapen the manufacturing process and be competitive. Because let's be honest, the labor, having to pay uh, a, a, an assembly line worker an American lifestyle wage compared to a Chinese lifestyle wage for the same work, there is no comparison. You cannot be competitive. Imagine how much cheaper cars could be if we didn't require humans on the assembly line. Now, people who work those jobs don't want to hear that, right? I mean, that's you're, you're talking about eliminating my job and replacing me with a robot. That could never happen. Robots can't do what I do. Every single year, robots are doing things they couldn't do the previous year. So at some point, we're going to have automated manufacturing. At some point in the future, it could be 50 years, it could be 100 years, it could be 10 years. At some point, we're going to have that. And once that happens, then you're going to see uh, a crazy economic reorganization. Once, and it's going to be scary because if labor, if your time isn't worth any money, how do you get money? If you can't go work a job and get paid, how do you get money to buy the things that people make? And that's where you hear all these arguments about universal income and stuff like that. So there will always be jobs. They just, they're going to change and evolve in their nature. Just like, you know, the VHS tape was going to destroy the movie theater. The Xerox machine was going to destroy the publishing industry. Um, what are some other good ones? Oh, my gosh. You know, the, the, the automobile was going to destroy the... Oh, wait, it did. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> So anyway, it's it's one of those funny things that uh, that life is going to change all around you. The one constant is change. You just have to adapt and you have to change with it. So, you know, we want to make our our stuff in America. We'd love to. I want to do it. I will pay more to do it, but I can't pay five times more or ten times more because I know my customers won't pay five or ten times more. There are some of you who will, but there's not enough of you that will. There's still the vast majority of people walk into our service center, look at our computers, walk over to Best Buy, look at their computers, and they come back and say, yours is a great quality machine. This is a piece of crap Acer. Why is yours $50 more expensive? And we have to like literally argue why that thing is a bad idea. Um, and then we tell them if they're going to buy it, please let us protect it with antivirus and things like that because we want to have you on our database because we know you're going to be in the market for a new computer in 18 months and you know we'll get you then um, so yeah so we, we would love to make our stuff in the US but it's just not feasible unfortunately act like you tell your children to act well I body slam my children on the couch so uh, and they love it so um, you know I suppose in the interest of bipartisan fairness grab someone from the other side of the aisle pick them up over your head and slam them down on a soft couch as hard as you possibly can. I think you'll enjoy it. I think they will too, right? My kids do. The shame the country is as divided or more so under Biden as we are under Trump. Outside influences are getting in the way. You know, this is human nature. Humans are tribal by nature, guys. Um, it's just, there's, uh, there's two tribes. And there are people, there are Republicans that were not passionately supportive of Trump. Just like there are Democrats who are not passionately supportive of Biden. So the question you have to have is, you know, this isn't the end of all elections. This isn't like, how will we ever have any Republican president ever again after this? Because the media is in the tank, social media is in the tank. Um, you know, how do you, how do you get the message out when you can't even tweet? You can't even send a message out to supporters. You hold a press conference and the networks choose not to cover it or cut away from it. How do you how do you get your message out if you can't communicate if the media won't cover you? You know, it's it's not a new problem, and uh, it's not something that's going to go away overnight. But if you get the right candidate with the right message with the right background, Americans are united in a lot of different things, a whole lot of things that we believe in. You know, people that voted for Joe Biden want to get up in the morning and they want to go to work and they want to come home and they want to play with their kids, and they want to have hobbies and do fun things and go out with their friends, and they want to live their life. Trump supporters want to be left the heck alone. They want the government to get out of their life. They just want to go do what they do. They want to go, they want to work hard, they want to earn money, 
They want to succeed in America. They want to go home and play with their kids. There's a lot that we're actually united on. It's just it's not politically expedient to highlight any of that because there's no benefit. Even if you sit down and you say, we're, we're all the same, you know, people on each side are still going to shout you down. So there's no political benefit to saying it. But this is where I said the thing, control what you can control. You can control this. You can't control anybody else. So if in your heart that's how you feel, you've done your part. And eventually, when people see, how are you so calm? How are you so happy? How are you, how are you at peace with your life right now with all the turmoil going around you? And then you'll tell them. And maybe they'll try it too because just like everybody else, nobody wants to feel anxiety all the time. It's ridiculous. All right. Just look at how much outside money was poured into the Don Bacon race. Yeah, you know, and that's the thing. A lot of a lot of money was poured into a lot of races. And the reason it was poured into those races primarily was they wanted to control state houses. Um, so the Don Bacon race was a, a targeted race. That's why so much money was poured into that one. But a lot of uh, a lot of money, hundreds of millions of dollars, was poured into state senate races, not U.S. Senate, but state senate and state house, not U.S. House but state house races, especially in Texas, trying to turn that state blue. Um, and the, the money's gone. It was all spent, and it didn't work. Um, so it, it tells you something. It tells you that there are conservative people out there that agree with some of the same things that liberal people agree with, some of the same things. Um, there are areas of agreement, and there will always be areas of disagreement, and elections are times when you highlight areas of disagreement, not agreement. Therefore, you're going to see it. I saw a great headline that said more people more people died of coronavirus today than yesterday than the day before as the United States awaits the Biden plan. You know, now it's time to put up. Are people going to remember that Biden said he was going to do it better than Trump? You know, it, when the vaccine comes out, is it still Trump's vaccine now or is it Biden's vaccine? Are people going to take it? You know, it's ridiculous that we're having those conversations. You know, it's... There's so many other things. And maybe it's just me dealing with everything I'm dealing with this week and I'm looking at this and I'm like, this is just stupid. This doesn't matter. Like, it matters. I get it that it matters. But it doesn't matter. How is this? Yes, it's going to impact people's lives, but it's not going to change anybody's life. Right? You change your own life. That's how the world works. No amount of money the government hands you, no amount of... Uh, of stuff you're required to do, no amount of regulations are going to make you happy. You can choose to be happy or you can choose to be an angry, vitriolic person. You know, my wife and I were talking and she was like, you know, wouldn't it just be, you know, now, you know, are the Democrats going to get a taste of their own medicine? Um, are Republicans going to start burning stuff down and calling Joe Biden a racist all the time uh, and, uh, and doing and making fun of him every time he stumbles when he speaks? Uh, and calling him, you know, senile all the time. You know, maybe we should invoke the 25th Amendment because, you know, Kamala should be president because he, he's obviously not with the program. Um, is that what's going to happen? Maybe there's going to be an investigation into the money from Ukraine and China, and, uh, you know, maybe we'll have to impeach him when we take the House. You know, that is that what is going to happen again now? Are we just going to flip sides and just, just like the Supreme Court thing? Are we just going to flip sides and go believe something completely opposite now and move forward on that? I hope not. I really hope not because who wants to live that way? My wife and I were talking about this. She was like, you know, it would be really hard to be that angry for that long. You mean It would be hard on you as a person. It would take years off your life to be angry for years and years and years about something, wouldn't it? I don't know. All right. <laughs> no problem, John. No problem, John. Th John says, thanks for your calming words. No problem. Who knows what the China blackmail on Biden will make him do? You know, and that's the thing. Because no questions were asked, because no investigations were done, literally half of the country has no idea that that's a story right now. Um, it's really hard to be upset with people who voted for this guy when they didn't know. And you can make all kinds of arguments that it was their responsibility to learn and find out, but it was your responsibility to go tune into MSNBC, too, and find out why they didn't like Trump and all the things, and, and vet every single claim that they made, too. How many of us did that, right? So I can't fault people for not knowing. Um, 
I fault the media for not asking questions. I mean, that since I thought it was truth to power, you know, it's like I thought you were supposed to ask questions of our leaders to make sure that they were beyond reproach, to be sure that there was not even the appearance of impropriety. There's been a lot of appearance of impropriety, and everyone's like, oh, don't worry about it, it's fine. You know, it's like, but if Trump did any of those things, I mean, wow, it would have it would have been end game, end days, you know. Biden will be a lame duck president. Quack 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 quack. <laughs> Enough Trump. He was crude and rude, just like a bully on the playground. He did have tendencies that were very similar to a bully on a playground. Um, on one hand, I don't agree with a lot of the ways that he projected and presented arguments and things like that. On the other hand. I also agree that the world isn't a playground, and there are very real, very evil people that have interests that differ dramatically from those of the United States. And it was nice to have somebody call a spade a spade for once. Now, would I have liked him to, do you know, you know, it's like, when you're in the South, and Joan, you can tell me about this, when you're in the South and you're being an ass, people don't look at you and say, you're being an ass! Bless your heart. You know, <laughs> that means you're being an ass. Stop. Bless your heart. Oh, bless your heart. I just have to disagree with you on something. Yeah, you know, it's there's there's a there's a way to disagree without being disagreeable, and there's a way to be assertive without being aggressive. Did Trump have those nuances? Oh, heck no. Who? Oh, heck no. Trump was a sledgehammer, and you got hit on this swing, and you got hit on that swing. <laughs> You know, it was, you got hit twice and it with every swing. And, you know, I guess maybe I got used to it over time. It's like, that's just Trump. That's how he is. Um, I think over time, a lot of people say, well, he never learned anything. Look at early Trump and look at late Trump. I think he learned a lot. Look at his later rallies when he realized he had a problem with, with um, uh, women, uh, with uh, suburban women. His voice was calm. He was talking normally in the rallies. He was making a reasoned case for be reelected. If he would have just done that more, you could argue. Yeah, but then again, you could argue that then he wouldn't have been Trump, right? The other thing you want to think about here, and I'm just going to put this out there as a possibility. Have you ever met Larry the Cable Guy? Larry the Cable Guy lives in Nebraska. His name is Dan. Yes, <laughs> his name is actually Dan. When Dan goes out with his wife, he wears shirts with sleeves on them. When Dan is at the dentist office where I met him, he talks like a normal human being. When Dan is on stage doing his comedy act, he is playing a role. Is it possible that the president was playing a role? That he was acting the way he thought he needed to act to get the results that he needed to get? just like when he was in the final stretch of the campaign and he moderated his tone a lot. You know, he wasn't a politician when he started, but he learned along the way that you have to play the game if you're going to win the game. And so he started to play the game a little bit. Was he good at that? Not as good as, as Joe Biden, obviously. Obviously, you know. Um, but it is what it is, right? There's nothing we can do about it. Too many people from California moving to Texas and trying to ruin our state like they ruined California. Don't California my Texas, Carolyn says. Speaking of parlor, is there anywhere that tells me how to use it? I have the app and I'm following some people, but I don't know how to find who has accounts. Okay, so when you're on the parlor, uh, well, I wasn't using the app, I guess. I was using the website, but on the in the middle on the bottom, there's like a home button. And if you click on that button in the middle, because uh, the one on the far left just shows you like, like what you're following. Uh, so you get a real echo chamber, but if you hit the one in the middle, it will show you like the latest feed. Um, most of the stuff on Parler is is literally con conservative red meat uh, right now. As Parler grows in popularity, you're going to see more moderate voices pop up on there because they're going to they're going to realize that Parler is becoming a source of information for half of the country, and you don't want to just write that off. Um, as conservatives basically abandon Twitter. Twitter is going to become more of an echo chamber than it already is. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely different and new. Leslie, if you were fired from your job, what if you were fired from your job because you were rude and crude? 
I don't know. If one of my employees is rude and crude, Keith, I'm going to fire him. <laughs> we, we don't have time for that kind of stuff. Fox News fired Judge Jean, unfortunately. Well, you know, um, KGOR fired their morning show here, too, uh, in Omaha. Uh, KGOR, I mean, they ran contests for old people. Like, literally. That's KGOR hits the greatest hits. And they had a good morning show, and it was budget. It was budget, guys. It wasn't because they did anything wrong. It was just budget. So whenever you see people in media switching jobs and moving around, um, don't always assume it was because of something they did or said. A lot of it can be budget or a contract negotiation that didn't work out. I'd like to go to a Biden campaign with some friends with duck calls. Keith, you're not helping. You can't wear political gear to go vote, but you, you sure you shouldn't be wearing it to count the votes. Yeah, that, that again, at the appearance of impropriety. You just, why, if you're an election commissioner, why would you allow that? All right, Cheryl and Rich are here in Council Bluffs. Went to the Papillion Service Center this week for upgrades to Asus and Apple computers. Thanks, Nikki, for great service. I will pass that on. It's very, Nikki runs the front desk, so usually they're like, hey, thanks, Ryan, or thanks, Jacob. We appreciate your help. Rarely do they say, thank you, Nikki, for your help. Uh, so I will make sure she hears that. She'll want to hear that one. Yeah, the, the soundtrack. Hallelujah! That's right, the pipe organs always tell me I'm going too long, right? It's time to get going. It's been an hour, guys. It hasn't been an hour. It's been 56 minutes. I think you're wrong. CNN declared Biden won. What are you... Are you saying we can't believe that? Laughy face. Okay, I get it. Okay, you're being sarcastic. I was like, wow. <laughs> okay. Media doesn't declare winners. Well, the media does declare the winner. They can declare anything they want. They declare things all the time. Um, doesn't mean it's true, but they declare it all the time. So the thing is, there are votes being counted. Let the votes be counted. They're going to get counted. Uh, let the military votes get counted. It, it's ridiculous that they're still waiting to count the military ballots. Then they got to get into the provisional ballots, guys, because you could request a mail-in ballot and then show up to vote that same day and have two votes counted. So they have to they have to canvass those as well. So that's what the term canvassing means. They're canvassing the vote right now. I don't expect any massive radical changes. The only thing that I have seen, okay, for those of you who are Trump supporters who are looking for any thread of a possibility, the only thing that I have seen that could change the results of the election is if there was a widespread problem with the Dominion voting system that received a last minute software update the night before the election. Speaking as someone who works in software development, you don't do that the night before a release. You just don't. That's what broke some one precinct's voting machines in Georgia. They had to send people out to fix them. Um, and the voting glitch caused a few precincts in Michigan that we've confirmed so far to, uh, to record a number of votes for Biden that shouldn't have been for Biden. It also recorded a number of votes in other local races for, for the wrong candidates. So if this was Operation Scorecard from the CIA working through Dominion voting systems, you would think they wouldn't screw with the local elections as badly as they screw with the presidential election. You'd think they're the CIA, they're smart, right? Or they're Dominion, they're smart, right? So it is very possible that there was actually a glitch in the last minute software update they pushed up to the voting system that caused the votes not to be tallied accurately. Now it is a little suspicious that the vote tallies always seem to fall in Joe Biden's favor. When they're wrong, votes go back to Trump. That's a little weird, right? But think about it from a coding perspective. If I write a program and I screw up on the subroutine that says, if Trump vote, then add one to Trump vote column, and I screw that up, and I copied the Biden one and pasted it in and meant to, meant to change add one to the Trump column, but I actually left it as Biden accidentally, that would cause a number of votes to be recorded for Joe Biden that shouldn't have been recorded for Joe Biden that when programmatically examined, we look at the tape. Each of these machines has a paper roll in it that records everybody's vote. That's separate from the digital report, right? So we can go back and, and, and figure this out. Let's figure it out. But, you know, Whether you're Joe Biden or Donald Trump, you want it figured out because you don't want to go into the presidency with half the country thinking that you shouldn't have been elected, that you were, you were not elected fairly. You know, at least with Trump and Hillary, there was a clear winner, right? It, you knew Hillary lost. Right now, people on the right don't feel that way. People on the left are, are like moving on with life, and people on the right are not. And that's a really dangerous thing to have. 
because you you want to be able to all agree on who the president is, right? So let's count everything up. Let's make sure it's accurate and fair and right. If there are legal challenges about when ballots were accepted, 2020 is a dumpster fire of a year, and we had a dumpster fire of an election. I wish I, I'm glad I'm not on the Supreme Court to figure it out, right? But they're going to figure it out. There will be vote. There will be decisions made. Votes will be finalized. Electors will be selected. That'll be the next thing you're going to hear about from the right. Is what states can pick electors that are not representative of the vote? Because Republicans control the state houses. And guess who picks the electors? The governor and the state houses. So it's possible that a state that voted for Joe Biden overwhelmingly could send Republican electors to go vote for Donald Trump instead of Joe Biden in the Electoral College, in essence, stealing the election from Joe Biden. That's the next stories you're going to hear next week. Um, yeah, it's... I hope nothing like that happens, guys. That would be... That would just be... That'd be awful on a lot of levels. Where does that end, right? If it can happen to a Democrat, it can happen to a Republican. Where does that end? Do you really want to be the one to pull the trigger on that nuke? All righty. I have not looked into Hammer or Scorecard. No, I have not. COVID was released by China to get rid of Trump. You know, I have no doubt that China didn't stop the spread of coronavirus, but... Communists are, are communists are all about control, and you know, there's no argument that the Chinese government is smart. <clears throat> but this is like next level Doctor Evil smart. Um, now, I, what I think is a likely probability is that there was a pandemic in China, and China realized it was going to crush their economy, and so they made sure that it crushed everybody else's economy too, so that they wouldn't be suffering alone. Whether or not Trump got nuked by it, I mean. You're talking about infecting the entire world to get rid of the president of the United States. It's a pretty long reach to get there. Um, you have to believe a lot of crazy things are going to happen to get there. Excuse me. But uh, I guess it's possible. But I don't know that it would be likely. All right. Follow at Parlor Support, and there are videos on how to use. Okay, cool. The saddest thing about the initiatives, more people voted in the gambling initiative than the slavery amendment. But that's the thing. Or more people voted on, oh, just voted in general. That slavery thing was deceptively worded. All right, so I voted I voted against it. My wife voted for it. She, my wife voted to abolish slavery, and apparently I voted to keep it. Uh, and she's looking at me, she's like, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> and I said, I thought it was like limiting the punishments that you could give to convicts. Like, no more picking up litter on the side of the highway. That's what I thought of when I read that. We can't. That's that's not slavery, but that is involuntary servitude, is it not? Community service is involuntary servitude. Did we just ban involuntary servitude and all community service from punishments because we thought it was slavery? That's when I read it. That's what I thought. So when my wife read it, she took something completely different from it. And I'm sure there's a lot of people who read it who just said, "What the heck is that?" I don't even know, I don't know what to put on there. And moved on. Kind of like with the judges, right? Do you vote for the judges or do you just pass them over because you don't know? I haven't been into court recently, you know. I always I always look them up ahead of time so I know who to, who to circle. But how many people probably go in there to vote for president and like, who are these judges? You know, don't retain any of them. I hate all judges, you know. All righty. Here in Iowa, there were millions of dollars sent in from out of state to defeat Joan Ernst and didn't work. Same thing with Don Bacon here. Same thing in a lot of places. Look at the good side. No flu. Yeah, it's amazing. The flu is down by 95% this year. Uh, it must be the masks. It's got to be. I'm just saying, hand sanitizer and the masks and the flu has killed the flu. If only we would have done this years ago. And, you know, if only we wear masks for the rest of our lives now. Um, then we'll never get sick with the flu ever again. And wouldn't that be worth it? A bully who gave us big tax cuts, who lowered the unemployment of many groups, and is bringing our troops home, I will take that bully every day. A lot of people feel that way. The big thing to learn from this is we need a major change in how voting is done in the U.S. Well, that's the thing. You've got to be careful with change. I think the liberals would agree with you that we need a major change in how voting is done, that the Electoral College is a joke. And it was for a bygone time where every state had the illusion that they had control over their own destinies. Because now, as we all know, every state literally is dependent on handouts from the federal government. Therefore, the, fed, this, uh, the populations of the states should pick 
the federal government offices. Um, do you remember or know that there was a point in time when United States senators were not popularly elected? So the, the state, so the United States House of Representatives was elected by the people to represent the general population. The United States Senate was there to represent the interests of the state as determined by the governor and the legislature of the state. So they sent the senators there to represent the state, and the people sent their legislators to the House to represent them. And so over time, we've been constantly eroding these, these states' rights to the point now where now we want to get rid of the Electoral College. So you've got to be careful with change and voting. You've got to be real careful with that. Please do not... Please do not giving your opinions out at least during the aftershock. Oh, please do not stop, I think is what you meant to say. Yeah, you know, it's it's tough because you can't be reasonable anymore, right? I mean, if you're reasonable, people hate you. If you're unreasonable, at least half the people like you, right? It's, it's just weird anymore. Yep, I see that, Donna. I figured it out. Don't stop. I had to research the involuntary servitude and how it would impact in community service has been ruled that it's not the same. Also research the judges. Most were recommended to be retained by the bar. You know, and I, I, looked, I looked up the judges ahead of time because I knew the judges were always on the ballot. There's always judges on the ballot. I didn't even know about the slavery thing until I stepped into the polling booth. And that's on me. I should have been more prepared. Um, but I just thought it was really disingenuous for the World Herald to run a story saying 35% of Nebraskans think that people should be in slavery. Um, that's, that's just stupid. I don't think that people should be enslaved. And I voted for it, but I don't think people should be enslaved because I didn't think that's what it said. So I, I guess that's how you word these things is really is really crazy, right? It's like they throw double negatives in there and stuff. Like a vote for means we will not give money to. <laughs> a vote against means they will get all the money they want. You know, it's like what? Why would you put it that way? No, there's reasons. All right, guys, it's been an hour. I've got to get going. Uh, we got a visitation to do today. So i got to get prepped for that. Um, thank you again for all the support that you guys sent. I did get an email uh, from Janet, uh, who uh, expressed her condolences about the passing of my father. Um, she's the funeral lunch chairman at Lutheran Memorial. Uh, they wish they could have held the service at the church, but they couldn't because of the pandemic, which we, we, we know. Um, I want to let you know that people who want to honor the deceased, even if they do not know him or her, they do it as a memorial gift to an organization or directly to the family to direct as they wish. On All Saints Sunday a week ago, Luther Memorial dedicated the items purchased by memorial contributions to the church. I suggest you graciously accept these cash or check memorials and contribute them to the organization of your mother's choice. You know, and that that's an excellent idea. So yeah, the plan was just to give it all to mom and let her figure out what to do with it anyway, so I'm right there with you, Janet. <laughs> <laughs> We're just like, it, when you have a check that's made out to like the Alan Schrock Memorial Fund, can you cash that check? Because there is no, that doesn't exist. Like, I don't know. And I, and I don't want checks, guys. I don't want cash. I don't want checks. I don't want monetary things. I'm not asking for that. I don't even want to give the appearance that I'm asking for that. Um, yeah, not asking for that. But I do appreciate the cards that you guys sent in. Um, the amount of time it took for someone to figure out where I live and send me a card at my house, creeper, but, but appreciate it, appreciate it, because it was done for the right reasons, appreciate it. Um, it's going to be a, it's going to be an interesting day today and tomorrow, uh, and then I'm sure as time goes on, but, uh, it's just been an interesting week this week in the Schrock household, let me tell you. <laughs> and, you know, and, and my uncle's got COVID, so, you know, he can't even come to the funeral. So, yeah. So, anyway. All right, I'm going to wrap it up. Thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate you joining me for the program today and appreciate you joining us for the Aftershock. Please remember to like and share uh, the show. It doesn't help as much as it used to, apparently, um, but it does help other people find the program and find you know what we do to help other people during the show. Um, if you have Endpoint on your computer still, you need to get Sophos. If you don't, I should say, if you don't have Sophos, you need to get Sophos. So get a hold of us in the service center. We're open today from noon to 5. Uh, we are staffed a little bit lower because it's a Sunday. We're typically slower on Sundays. So if you have trouble getting through, that's why. Uh, on Monday, we'll be back in in full force again. Don't forget that on Veterans Day, all current active duty military and retired or veteran or veterans 
receive all labor services free on Veterans Day at Schrock Innovations. That is Veterans Day only. Not the day after, not the day before, Veterans Day only. So if you're going to come in for something and you're a veteran, make sure you do it on Veterans Day. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great afternoon and a great weekend, and we'll talk to you again next week.